Today I'm talking about 10 things that every beginning wedding filmmaker should know going into their first wedding. Tip number one, overshoot everything. Weddings are stressful. Anxiety inducing events because of their nature. You only get one day to capture everything that you need to tell a compelling story. So my first tip is gonna be to overshoot everything. And the reason is because you need to learn the patterns of a traditional wedding day, how they flow, how they function, the structure of everything, the process and the order of events. And overshooting everything is a great way to not only elevate your skill, but also allow you to recognize what you need for your story and what you don't need. Repetition is the mother of mastery and the foundation for the art of adapting to all of those unpredictable moments on the wedding day. Tip number two is audio is so important. This is one huge mistake that I made early on in my career, and that was not focusing on capturing quality audio on the wedding day. Because audio is one of the most important aspects of filmmaking in order to create an immersive and emotive film. Quality visuals with just music alone won't cut it. Couples really value authenticity. They want story. They want the best rerun of their life, and the best way to do that is by capturing quality sound on the day. Don't just listen to me, listen to an actual couple about what they value. From what I've seen that I really liked is like the family. Like first look with dad, that makes me cry every time. I don't know, I think that the connections, like the family aspect is huge, like absolutely huge. More the aesthetic and the fun that I can see people having and the like the, just us interacting with people I feel like is what I like. Yeah. I, I don't like really like, the drama. Before we get into the next tip, I do have to talk about the sponsor of today's video, and that is the good people over at Uncut Gems. If you haven't heard of these guys, they are a premier video editing service for wedding videographers. I have been using them for the last few months, and they have just been incredible at saving me time, helping me kick backlog in the face, and just bringing joy back into my life because I don't have to stress about edits, I don't have to just be bogged down to my computer, Day after day, I can focus on working on my business rather than working in my business, and that has been a godsend. So if you wanna check out Uncut Gems and see if they can help you do the same, head over to uncutgems.com and use my code wayward65 at checkout so that you can get 65% off on your first order. So kick back, log in the face, and get back to being excited about your business. Couples value authenticity, not just for their wedding film, but from their vendors. Couples really want to see you passionate about what you do. They want to know that they are in good hands because you care deeply about not just the filmmaking process, but preserving this special moment in their lives. And so what does that look like on the wedding day? That means you smiling, you having a good time, being present. You really want to show up for your couples mentally at every single wedding. And I know that's a challenging endeavor, especially if you've been doing this for so long, being present and in the moment, it takes some skill, it takes some practice, and that looks different for everybody. Maybe it means that you get a good night's rest the day before the wedding. Maybe that means you get up in the morning and you exercise. Maybe you decompress through video games. Whatever it looks like for you to get mentally in shape for the wedding coming up, I highly encourage you guys to do that so that you can be present and that you can make the best wedding film right from the start. Tip number four is renting a backup camera. Now, when I first got going, this is one thing that I did was just renting a backup camera just in case I needed one. But you may also rent a camera for an extra ceremony angle, an extra speeches angle. But for me, it was more so just in case my main camera died and I needed a quick solution to pick back up and keep going with the filmmaking process. And the best platform to rent camera gear, in my opinion, is Lens Rentals. They have been a quality solution for me throughout the years, and I know that they will take great care of you. So if you're considering adding a new camera or just renting one in general, check out Lens Rentals. I will have a link down below that you can check them out. All right, so let's talk about some technical aspects of going into your first wedding. And the first thing I wanna talk about is camera movement. In my opinion, less is more and really is the best approach when you're navigating your first few weddings. Get familiar with framing, with composition, with letting your characters move in your frame to tell the story instead of you manufacturing that movement. This is gonna help you be a lot more intentional when you navigate future weddings and give you the proper skill set on how to frame and properly compose an image so that you can maximize the emotional impact. And I say this because every one of my first few wedding films, 
had movement for no reason. There was left to right panning, there was rack focus. I was just moving to move because I felt that if my frame wasn't moving, my film was gonna be boring. And honestly, that's just not true. I think less is more and just practicing the fundamentals and getting good at properly framing and exposing and composing your shot first can help you so much later down the road. This could be you using a monopod, a tripod, or if your camera has internal image stabilization, just going handheld and being still, just practicing the art of stillness. Which if you are anxious like me, sometimes that is hard to do, especially on the wedding day, but I promise it will save you a lot of frustrations later in your edit. Tip number six, indie filters versus shutter speed warriors. One piece of gear that I do recommend you invest in, especially if you're going into your first few weddings, is an ND filter. Especially if you aren't blessed with built-in NDs in your camera, this is gonna help you properly expose, maximize your camera's output, and just get you one step closer to understanding proper filmmaking protocols. Because once you know the rules, then you can break the rules in order to get the shot that you need in the fastest way possible. But if you're just starting out and you can't afford an ND filter, then exposing with your shutter speed is not the end of the world. I know there are a lot of purists out there that would argue night and day with me on that, but I was a shutter speed warrior for years and it wasn't until I found a quality ND filter that I stopped doing it, but I will say, no one's really gonna be able to tell besides other filmmakers. And you're not creating for them, you're creating for your couple. So breaking the rules to capture the moment is always the number one rule. But if you wanna learn more about ND filters and which brands that I love to use, you can find that video here. Tip number seven, which picture profile should you be filming in for your first few weddings? Getting started in filmmaking and filming weddings, you may be inclined to film in log for your very first wedding because you see the amazing transformation from this flat profile to these vibrant rich colors, and it's just filled with a ton of dynamic range and just looks really awesome. But if you're just getting started, I feel that it is necessary for you guys to avoid log altogether and focus on filming your first few weddings in a standard picture profile. Because log does come with some caveats in understanding how to properly expose and the color management and workflow and all of those things that it takes to get your footage from looking super flat to just really awesome. And log may provide just a little bit of overwhelm when you're just getting started. Standard can just help you create an efficient workflow right from the start, ease the overwhelm, and give you those vibrant rich colors right out of camera. Tip number eight is auto white balance versus manual white balance. Now, if you're just getting started, this is your first few weddings, you're just learning the art of filmmaking and how to navigate your camera, then I would recommend using auto white balance because having another setting to worry about on the wedding day is just gonna be really cumbersome. It's gonna stress you out and it may diminish the value that you provide for your couple. It may cause you to miss a moment because you're like, well, what white balance should I set? I don't know, I'm stuck at 32, but it needs to be 56. So in this situation, you just wanna set it to auto capture the moment and then move on. And then as you learn how to contrast light and which temperature is best for each condition, then switch from auto to manual. I did briefly talk about white balance in one of my latest videos, all about camera basics. So if you wanna check that out, you can find it above as well. Tip number nine, details are great, but people are better. Genuine connections between the guests, the bride and groom are so much more valuable than the details. And the best wedding films that I've seen have really less detail shots and more authentic moments. Now, I'm not saying that detail shots aren't necessary and that you shouldn't capture them because I still think you should overshoot everything, make sure that you're capturing every little nook and cranny from the wedding itself. But when it comes to the edit, really focusing in and locking in on those authentic moments, those genuine connections, that's gonna make a much more impactful film. This is what couples wanna see when they're looking for their wedding videographer. They wanna see how well you capture those genuine moments because this is real life and the details are a great bonus, but this is how you're really gonna book more weddings is because you're putting a focus on people over things. And the last and final tip is to focus on building your inner circle. The wedding day is a beautiful moment for the bride and groom and the culmination of joining families, but it's also an incredible opportunity for you to build your inner circle 
within your business. Make connections, build relationships, be kind, be quick to offer a hand, focus more on helping others rather than serving yourself. Create films for other vendors for them to use on their social media. This includes the venue owners, the planners, the florists, the DJs. You have a beautiful opportunity to serve everyone involved, help build your inner circle so that you can get repeat business, that you can be recommended from these vendors to their couples and you can keep that circle going and going so that you never have to pay for ads, you never have to worry about where another lead is gonna come from. You're building your inner circle so that you can have sustainability within your wedding business right from the start. Well, that has been my 10 tips every new wedding videographer should know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you found this video helpful and valuable in some way. If you did, it means so much if you consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.